welcome guys. Thank you for joining us for the workshop today. We're going to continue with our training series as well. So mostly what we're going to focus on is three and four in the workshop, but we should have plenty of time to go over the restorative poses too. We have a nice two hours together, which is amazing. So about the last 20, 25 minutes of the workshop is going to be a nice long shavasana. So you guys should go ahead and practice getting into your swing, getting the swing into the sweet spot, low, below the, like low on the ribs and below what we call the bra line. <laughs> Even if you don't wear a bra, you know where it is. So go ahead and use your forearm press to support the swing. And I call this a hook, right? So we're hooking it in a way that is making sure it doesn't slide out and pinch the underarms. And then we're going to start out in our sumo squat. This is our number one traditional beginner pose. Upright position. Walk your feet forward. Remember to trace the shape of the mat. So the mat is always right underneath the plumb line. So that means our bum sits right in the center of the mat. And then the feet are forward, forward towards me. Now I get to teach everything backwards, which is super exciting, so that <laughs> we can practice facing one another. Okay. So forearm press is going to make sure that we can lift our sternum and then press your pivot bone down and under. See if you can find that. Nice. And then from there, we're just going to play and rock a little bit from side to side. So then if you feel like you want to see me better and hop in that middle swing, that's great. Otherwise, it's nice to have the space, right? Now we have plenty of right. leg room for everybody. All right. Let's go ahead and shift a little bit more from side to side. So just play time, right? So let's have a little bit of freestyle. Don't worry about syncing up quite yet. Just start to enjoy the sway and the play and the swing supporting you to allow the hips to drop and go deeper into a lunge on each side. So it's nice to have so much space, right? After being in our little cubby, it feels like, oh, look at all this room. You guys all did such a great job with number one and two, and we're gonna continue with our floating Buddha and dancing and our dance shivas, and we're going to go into some more chillaxing poses. So straighten your legs, lean back, support the head. This is called chillaxing arms. And so staying on a diagonal, pushing the hips up towards the sky, straight legs, lift the heart towards the heavens, lean back so your head feels supported, and just have a gentle micro movement rocking from side to side. Elbow is going to kind of come in the direction towards the hip. Energetically, it's not going to come close to touching, but that's the overall direction. Beautiful, guys. Come back through center. Inhale, open up your arms wide. Exhale, T. And then inhale, forearm press. Okay? Drop the hips. We're going to heel toe our feet together. We're just going to come into some gentle twists here. Keep the legs straight. Go ahead and lift. Let's see, I guess it's our left knee now. <laughs> left knee towards the sky. Roll onto the outer edge of the right foot. Step as high as you can. So you can step by the knee to make it easy, or step all the way up, right angle with the hip. Straighten the bottom leg and flex the foot back. Yes, very good. See how my foot's towards the front of the mat? We're going to keep the shape of the semicircle by bringing your foot to the front of the mat. Go ahead and wiggle your foot towards me. Bring me a little. Bring your foot towards the front of the mat. There you go. Perfect. Slide on in. Okay. Look over the opposite shoulder. So knees pulling to the right, gaze is towards the left, away from the knee. There you go. And twist. Drop to strengthen the pose. Feel the obliques opening up, the QL. And then inhale, pull that left knee back up into the chest. Straighten both legs. Release the arms out wide. So shake it out, jazz hands. Okay, for those that are doing the training, just kind of feel what is familiar and also what we're adding in new. Inhale, bring the arms up overhead. Exhale, go ahead and come back into your forearm press. So if you ever want to just take a little break and sway it out from side to side here, this is a nice way to loosen up the hips too. So go ahead and pull the right knee up into the chest, roll into the outer edge of the left. Step. High and wide, right? So if you bring the foot out to the edge of the mat, you'll be perfectly in position to twist. So the gaze is over towards the right, hips drop straight down. 
the breath there. Drop it in. Inhale, press the hips up just slightly, and then exhale, drop in again. So just pulse in the pose. That's great. Look over the opposite shoulder, really steady. Keep the chest open. Inhale, lift. Beautiful. Exhale, go ahead and drop. Beautiful. Inhale, go ahead and pull that right knee back up into the chest, straighten both legs. Supported back bend, reach the arms overhead. Now straight arms if your neck is happy. Chillax in arms if you want the support and be a little bit more mellow about it. And then we're going to come a little, a little bit deeper, a little bit more sway. And when we add some swagger to the swing, we call it leaping the low in this pose. So this is where you get more play time. So in the poses, I'll give you lots of uh, guidance and direction, and then there are other times that I'll give you lots of play and exploration to just experience the body in your own way. So let that feel good. Let the body continue to open up. Ah, easy breezy. So we're learning the basics, and when we master the basics, we can take those poses and let them inform the movements in the advanced. So. Everything that we learn, we're going to build upon. It's going to be like that. Got the whole weekend. Let's come through center. Let's go ahead and inhale. Bring your arms up over our head. Exhale, come back into the forearm press. So let's try a forward lunge. Pull, left knee up into the chest. Shoot it back, stay onto the toes. Bend the right knee and come forward into a lunge. Knee is going to track over the ankle. So if you go too far, um, there's just pressure on the knee that's unnecessary, so make sure you keep a right angle on the front leg. Everybody knows what that means, right? So if your front looks good, inhale, press your arms into the swing. Exhale, lean back into a back bend. You might press your forearm so much that your left knee lifts up gently, and that allows you to arch and open your heart. Exhale, drop it back in. Pause there. Inhale, press and lift. Let it feel good. Stretch the belly, stretch the psoas, stretch the quad. Exhale, drop back in. We're going to go a little bigger and deeper if anybody wants to. We're going to inhale, arch and press. Exhale, straighten the front leg. Bring your head towards your left heel. It's not going to touch, just that directional. And then inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, pull the knee back up, that left knee up, and then straighten both legs. Sway it out for a minute. Just drop the hips this time. Just kind of loosen up all that stickiness that happens along the iliac crest. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and inhale, lift the hips, bring the knee up. This time we're on the right knee. Shoot it back, stay onto the toes. That gives you a little bit more control to lift the knee and then bend the left knee a lot, right? Drop it in. So we feel the quad stretch there, but this is, the lunges here are so different from when we're on the floor without the swing because we're lifting the chest. So we use our forearms pressing in strongly to lift the chest, and then when we arch up over the bar that's behind the heart, we can lift so much that that right knee may come up. It may or may not lift up, but if you can, go ahead and stretch the whole front of the spine and belly, and then exhale, go ahead and soften and pull the knee down so you're upright. So straight up and down here. Okay? Let's take a breath. The next inhalation, press, press, press. Lift the chest. Roll the gaze towards that balloon and then exhale, come on back down. Okay, one more time. So we inhale and we lift. We lift so much that we can straighten the front leg. And then we're going to bring the top of the head towards the right heel. Mm, big stretch. Okay, go ahead and inhale, lift the chest, pull the right knee up, shoot it forward, come back into chillax in arms, make your way to a supported back bend, and sway it out from side to side. I know we're getting a little out. Now we might have enough room where we don't have any bumper car action, but if we do come in contact, we just say we love you, so sorry and sync up when you need to. Just be intuitive about it. If fish can do it, we can do it, right? <laughs> so we just practice our synchronized swim and then bump curves is okay sometimes, we'll call it freestyle. 
Okay, beautiful guys. Now we're gonna come back to center. Let's go ahead and open it up into sumo squat. I wanna, I wanna go ahead and test out the leg loops and see if they're in a good position for us. So go to, we have to keep our anchor, right? We learned our anchors earlier. We're gonna grab for the leg loop with both hands. Go ahead and lift right knee up. I turn it out to the side to get my foot up there. See if you can do it. Otherwise, it seems really, really far. <laughs> there you go. So your, your leg loops definitely need to come down one. Yep, almost got it. Okay, cool. I'm testing you guys out too and making sure we're in a good place. All right, so let's go ahead. We're gonna grab for the left leg loop with both hands. That's a good catch. So we're gonna keep our arms wrapped around. So we pull our knee up into the chest. We have to use our core. Bend the knee out to the side, and then we can get it behind the ankle. Very good, guys. Now, to, in order to get the swing to come down, lift the hips, slip, slide down like the low end of the rib cage, and then come back up. Use your forearm, press the hook. That's better. Yeah. Okay. So whenever, so drop the hips a lot. Keep the hip flexors good. Nice. Use the forearm. So with the feet about shoulder height. No, we want the feet, oh, the toes. Well, we want the feet about chest level. So yours are still a little high. Can you feel that it's a big stretch? So the higher they are, the more challenging it is. For older people and beginner people, I bring the leg loops really low because they'll have a hard time lifting their leg to even get it in. You can try it like that. It's a bigger stretch. Yeah. Is that comfort to you, Rachel? Comfortable, a good stretch in my circle. Yeah, so that's the idea. You get a bigger stretch when the leg loops are higher, and there is lots of play or variation with where we can put them, depending on our own preferences. Some days I like to work with them higher than others, but they're pretty much as high. Everybody's leg loops are as high as I want them to go. I wouldn't bring them any higher, right? Okay, great. So we're in floating Buddha. The first thing I like to do is keep the forearm press. Okay, and we're gonna winch away with the legs. Okay, so just freestyle a little bit. We have straight legs and we push one heel down and then the other heel down and we get to sway from side to side. Now, if anybody wants to lean back and support the head, use your chillaxin arms instead of the forearm press. Keep your hips heavy so you have that big arch happening from the upper thoracics and then just let yourself sway from side to side. So this is when the spontaneous knee comes. We're Right? We get the second leg and spin. At the same time as we're just playing, right? We're just hanging out playing. We're starting to stretch all of the connective tissue, all the fascia, and particularly in between the ribs, is starting to loosen up and open. And once we open up the fascia, then the muscles have a little bit more space and freedom to both get the expansion and get the strength. Does that make sense? So that's why this swing is so different than any other practice, because of this just gentle rocking and swaying motion will start to release and soften that surface charge that sits right underneath the surface of the skin, which is the connective tissue we call the fascia. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you guys some little tidbits of information like that, which we learned in the AIRX program for the regenerative therapeutics to understand how we can apply the poses to relieve certain um, injury and ailments. So I just thought I'd throw that tidbit in there since I find it really fascinating. And that is the easiest way to open up the fascia is to hang and play and swing. You guys are doing great, watching out for one another. So we all have these nice <coughs> long limbs and there's walls and furniture and pillars and stuff. And we all just be mindful of the space. So it's great. All right, when you're ready, start to slow it down. Slow your swag, come back to center. Use your forearm press to help you lift. Remember the, the hips, yes. So I want you, in particular, I want you to hold on to the swing. Everybody can do it if they need an adjustment. Go ahead and press the hips towards the sky. Lean back, get the swing a little bit lower, then come on up, drop the hips, use the forearm press. There you go, you feel how that looks a little bit better, a little relief. And we'll have to do that a bunch of times. And this like free romping session you're getting on your subscapula area and the upper thoracic, you're welcome. 
I know it's very uncomfortable at first. <laughs> People pay me a lot of money <laughs> to do this intense deep tissue on them. And it will start to rearrange and adjust the posture, opening up the shoulders, engaging the lats so that we get the strength in the upper body to hold the new posturing in time. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and try a little bit of flow. Let's open up the hips first. I call this the, the, the mini vinyasa flow, if you will. We're gonna tee the arms. Okay, we always keep our, our, our anchor here, okay? We're gonna bend the left, right knee in, <laughs> left, right. <laughs> and then wrap your hands around, hold on strongly and drop the hips for a floating pigeon. I'm going to attempt to do these in the order in which we would learn them in the training, but it might be uh, spontaneously random, too. Okay, square the hips as much as you can. Use your, your arms to pull down. So instead of flaring the elbows out, pull the elbows down. Yeah, and notice what happens with the shoulders. Really good, guys. So always keep your anchor, Sam. So both arms stay wrapped around. Yes, it's really quite popular for people to lose the hook. And then if we go into another pose, they could easily fall out. So since we're learning how to do the acrobatics really from the simpler poses, we don't ever want to lose our hooks. Really good. Okay. Go ahead and release and expand. This is called the wide straddle T. Do a few yards. So the second side, bend the left knee in, reach around, both hands grab. So we have a nice strong hook here. And then drop. So it's easy to push the hips up towards the sky as well. Drop the hips as much as possible. The more you drop the hips, the bigger the stretch. Very good. All right, take another breath there, and then go ahead and inhale and expand. Now from here, if we ever need a break, we just lean back. We lean back, we open the arms, and this is called star. You can always use chillaxin arms if you prefer. Contraction the neck. If you can, just point the heart up towards the sky and keep it steady. All right, come back to the T. Straight up and down. Let's try the first side again. So we're going to wrap around. So we're holding onto the leg loop with both hands strongly. So if we want to transition to using our right hand to pull the knee in, we get a deeper um, glute stretch. And if we want to use that same right hand to push the knee down, spiraling down towards the earth, we get uh, a piriformis stretch or an iliac press stretch, which is amazing. For anybody with lower back pain, this is a big reliever. You can also be a little lazy about it since this is the restorative sequence. You can also rest your head, which is kind of nice. It's just, just let the head lean against the side. And you'll notice that as I traction my right knee down towards the earth, I can push my left hip up towards the sky. I'm going to slide that left hand a little bit higher and get the bottom of my foot on the inner thigh. And all of a sudden, I'm in a side tree. Bend the knee a lot so the foot is above the knee. So foot up. Yes. And then push the hips towards me. So we're in a side body plane. So Sam, keep your anchor. Keep your arm wrapped around the swing. And then grab for the leg. There you go. Beautiful, guys. And just expand in all directions. Let that feel good. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to unfurl. Just go ahead and drop the hips. Come back through center. Open up to the wide straddle T. You're doing great. <sighs> Take a breath there. Bend the left knee in. Keep your hook. Wrap around. Grab with both hands. So we're squaring the hips to begin. We identify our left hand. <laughs> and then pull the knee into the chest to get the glute stretch, okay? So that's number one. The second one is pushing the knee down towards the earth and starting to spin and spiral the hips open. <clears throat> and as we lean into that, we open up the whole oblique iliac press on the left. And then if we wanna push the right hip up towards the sky, Slide your hands up a little bit on, on the leg loop. It's really helpful. I'll get the bottom of the foot on the inner thigh. Beautiful. Open up the arm wide. Side tree. Mm -hmm. And let your legs fly and stay in space. It's side tree when we're super mellow about it. It's flying ninja when we get like super hero-ish about it. So we'll pick 
Where do you want to be today? Keep pushing your hips towards me. Mm -hmm. Knee points down towards the ground on the left side. Mm -hmm. Awesome. If you ever want to support the head, this is called supermodel. So you can just take your left hand, put it behind your head, bend the elbow, and then lean back into it. Beautiful. Thanks, guys. All right, unfurl, drop your hips, open up wide straddle T, exhale star. So keep the hips heavy, see if you can roll the sternum towards the sky, keep tucking the pubic bone down and under so you get this traction in both directions, drop your hips even more so you can, there you go. Perfect, guys, that looks good. Okay, inhale, squeeze the legs together, squeeze the hands together into prayer around the swing, nice. Push your hips towards the sky. This is called reverse namaste. So hooking with the forearms strongly allows you to come into a supported back bend. Does that feel good? Just stretch the neck in front of the shoulders. Exhale, go ahead and sink the hips down. Open it up again into a wide straddle T. Really good. Let's do that half vinyasa flow again. Inhale, go ahead and roll the chest up towards the sky. Exhale, open the palms in a gesture of receptivity. Star. Sit back there. Inhale, squeeze the legs together. Squeeze the hands together into prayer. Press up and back into reverse namaste. Nice deep cleansing breath. Open up the front of the body. Push the hips towards the sky. And then exhale, sink the hips down. Open up into the T. Okay, we'll do that one more time. Inhale, T. Exhale, star. Inhale, squeeze the legs together, squeeze the hands together. Exhale, reverse namaste. Okay, adding on to that sequence, inhale, reach up and grab for the swing. Exhale, lower your head towards the floor. Let the swing shimmy into the waist for ladle. And then if you feel comfortable, swing your arms up overhead. Palms face the sky, straighten the arms. So drain the energy from the toes all the way through the front of the spine to the fingertips for the full ladle position. Nice long lines of energy. And then inhale, swing your arms back up. Exhale, lower the hips. Woo, you might get a little free high there. And sit on down. Okay. So I'm going to do it one more time so you guys can see the sequence. So the legs squeeze together in ladle, okay? Most happy guys had the legs open. So let me just show you, just think of it like gravy, like Thanksgiving, right? The ladle's gonna pour, you don't wanna drop the gravy. Then spill the gravy. So we're gonna perform reverse namaste, just watch. I let the swing slide into the waist, the palms are up towards the sky, I squeeze my legs together, and I'm pouring the energy out through the palm, right? So reach up, grab for the swing, inhale, sit up, and exhale, open. Go ahead and just try it from reverse namaste so I can give you guys instructions. So go ahead and inhale, squeeze the legs together, squeeze the hands together into prayer. Push the hips up towards the sky and lean back. Beautiful. See if you can keep the hands at the heart for, for namaste so it's a strong forearm. Yeah, it's totally different then, right? Then you get the stretch in the neck and the shoulders. Beautiful, guys. Now go ahead and reach up and grab for the swing on the next inhalation. Exhale, let your head pour down towards the earth. Squeeze the legs together strongly. Together, squeeze your legs together. Thank you. Okay, so this is Vince. This is when you see when you have high leg loops. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit more challenging. Palms are up over your head towards the sky. Long arms over your head. There you go. Squeeze your legs together. Mm -hmm. Now, do you feel like a ladle? <laughs> you can feel the energy literally draining out through the front of the spine and the front of the body. Beautiful, guys. Inhale, swim your arms back up. Go ahead and grab the swing. Beautiful, grab for the swing. So the legs stay together until you come to sit. And then, yeah, once you come to sit, you open it up. There you go, beautiful. Just, you know, details, lots of variations, but that's, that's the way that I like to do it. So again, it looks like this. And then I reach up, come to sit, and then open. Very good. Let's do it all from the top. Let's take it from the, from the beginning. So inhale, wide straddle T. Exhale, star. <sighs> Open up the palms, flex the fingers back, get the nerve stretch. Inhale, squeeze the legs together, squeeze the hands together. Exhale, hands stay at the heart, right? Exhale, press the hips up. 
lean back, big forearms, hold there. And then inhale, reach up for the swing. Exhale, pour the head down towards the earth. Squeeze the legs together, swim the arms down, palms up. <sighs> nice deep cleansing breath, let that happen. This is our first inverted back bend, the best possible thing you can do to turn on the endocrine system. Inhale, swim the arms back up towards the sky, reach for the swing, pull yourself up to sit, and then exhale, just relax for a breath. Side straddle, yay! Now we have to allow that integration to happen. So why don't we just go back into our windshield wipers, gentle windshield wipers this time if you can. So feel the difference, feel the transformation, the shifts that are happening in the body, just from simply feeling supported in a deeper, version of back bends. Okay. So we're opening up the heart in all the places. At the same time, we're allowing there to be more space in the spine to take pressure off of the vertebrae, which heals the discs and allows there to be a balancing and calming of the nervous system and a boosting of the immune system. All from hanging out. Okie dokie. So we're going to come back to center. Let's move into our swing bada position. So we're going to bend both knees in and then press the feet together. So push your knees out and down. So it's like Baddha Konasana on the ground, right? So in this pose, it's going to be challenging to drop the hips all the way. So the hips are going to be like medium, right? We're not pushing the hips up towards the sky, but they're going to come up a little bit so we can actually push the feet together. And so I'm going to let the swing come up a little bit higher, clasp the hands behind the head, and create a double diamond with the body, right? So elbows are flaring out wide, knees are flaring out wide, and allowing both the shoulders and hips to open. And this would be the restorative version. So some people might want to just stay here, and this is enough for them. If you want to go in further, we're going to go come into flying monkey. So we inhale, open the arms wide, reach for your knees. It's really important to identify where the leg loops are versus where the swing is. So most people will grab for the swing unless you give them extra instruction. So from your knees, slide towards your ankles and reach up on as high as you can on the leg loops. Press your feet together the whole time. This is your foundation. Knees stay wide, hips press up towards the sky, and we're gonna lean back into it, getting another big stretch through the tissue. Now from here, because it's a workshop, I usually do some bicep curls. So we're gonna keep our feet together, knees open wide, inhale, curl up, sit on your feet. Exhale, go ahead and lean back. Keep your hips pressing up the whole time. Inhale, bicep curl up. Get some more strength going. Exhale, go ahead and lean back. Inhale, pull yourself up. Exhale, lean back. Inhale, and up last time. So lean back. Now keep holding on, don't let go. Sink your hips back and open your legs wide. Wide straddle, right? So in our wide straddle, we're gonna try some splits here. So wide straddle splits, bicep curl, pull yourself up. Exhale, lower yourself back down. That's enough, right? Inhale, pull up. <laughs> Exhale, lower back down. <laughs> this can be really hard, right? <laughs> so we don't go too far and do too much too fast. We let ourselves build the flexibility and the strength slowly. I know, and then your hands are going to need a break too, so go ahead and release, do some jazz hands, open it up, hang out in the star for a minute, and then come back into chillaxing arms. Take a breath. So see if you can clasp your hands together, press them away from you, so palms facing away, and just stretch the arms. So after doing such a Big hold with the swing. Sometimes it's nice to just do a little finger stretch too. Okay? Really good, guys. Okay, so the next pose that we come into is the last pose in the sequence, which is really hard. I'm just going to tell you right now. And um, just try it if you want to. We're going to go through the flying monkey, and then we're going to come into wow. So it's going to look like what we just did before. So we come into swing bada. So just repeat the names in your head, right? Like swing bada, okay, swing bada. It's like swing bada bada, bada kanasana, 
supposed to be funny. I mean, that's all the names and sequences to be entertaining. So don't hold on to the swing. Reach forward for your knees and then slide up. Slide on up. Okay, it's nice to reach up as high as you can. Feet stay together, nice and strong foundation. Push the hips towards the sky and lean back to find your feet. Stretch the chest, stretch the front and back. Keep pushing the hips towards the sky. Inhale, bicep curl up. Okay. Exhale, lean back. Inhale, lift. <laughs> Exhale back. Just three this time. Inhaling up. We sink our hips down. We open it up. So stay here. What I'm going to do is thread. So I'm going to pull the leg loop back that's closest to me. I'm going to bring my hands around and I'm going to thread so that there's an exit my ankles. See if you can do it. So just grab to the opposite side. Just try it. Grab for the leg loop and pull it back. Mm -hmm. Make sure, yep, yeah, exactly. Keep pulling. You did it. Good. See how there's an X to the ankles? So this is how we come into wow. Okay, and after this, we'll give the arms a break. So just stick with it if you can. So we're going to lean back, pull on the leg loops, arch and open, and you're going to feel them kind of bunching at the ankles to make sure that they don't slide. And then if you can, pull your feet towards the sky or just lean back enough to get a big arm stretch. So after we do that once, go ahead and Come down to sink, shake it out. Beautiful, guys. Yeah. So you can see, that's why we call it wow. <laughs> Sometimes it turns into whoa. Oh, whoa. And just do a little jazz hands here. That was really great. All right. Let's um, just play a little bit from going side to side. Give yourself some time to integrate what just happened. All that information. You can keep the knee bent. So I like to call it freeze frame when we bend to one side. Stretch it out, push your hips up. So I want to show you how to come into and this. Is, this is the, these are the bonus rounds, the bonus sections. But I think it's really good to know how we can come from here. So this is our our wide straddle, right, with the leg loops in our hands. So I'm just going to hold on to one side because it's easier to pull back, but you can hold on to both sides. Okay. I'm going to pull the left foot in for a pigeon. I'm going to pull the right knee in, and then I'm going to come into the quad stretch. So just try it. Now, pigeon on one side, quad stretch on the, on the other. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Pull yourself straight up and down. You did it. Awesome. Now, if anybody is feeling extra zany, you can straighten the left leg from there. That's a big stretch. Okay? Really good, guys. Now, if there's, it's totally unnecessary. Keep the foot flexed. Sam, where you'll slide out. There you go. Cool. Got it. Just in time. Okay, so let's come back into the bent left knee. Pull the right knee up towards the sky. And we're going to switch sides. So just try it. So try bending the right knee, bending the left knee, pulling yourself up to sit. Make sure you hold on to your anchors the whole time. So once we're straight up and down, then we can try to straighten the front leg. Very good, guys. You guys are all superheroes already. Keep that foot flexed on the left so you don't come flying out. Really nice. Okay, so bend left knee, bend right knee, pull the left knee towards the sky, and we're going to slide right into our chillaxing pose. Really good, guys. Oh yeah, so chillaxing is when the leg loops are at the back of the knees, knees are bent, and then chillaxing arms, what we've been doing is where the elbows are flat, our elbows are bent, and open wide. Keep the hips heavy. Notice that, that whenever there's tension in the lower back, we tend to push the hips up. If we drop the hips, the lower back to relax. And then we can arch and open from the heart instead of crunching the lumbar spine. So leg loops are at the knees, knees are bent, and now we're doing the chillaxing sequence. Okay, let's all stick together. Is this, Vince, is that feel okay? Yeah, they're as high as we want them to go, but you could always bring them down. Okay, so we just did all of number three. We had one more pose that we might visit later, which was the Sukta Varasana, but completely unnecessary. Let's go ahead from our chillaxin arms, push one knee down, and then the other knee down, and just sway it out for a few more breaths. So swagger. It's called a windshield wiper, and the leg loops are at the ankles. We have straight legs. 
It's called swagger when the ligaments are at the knees. Same feeling and motion in the body. I just wanted to emphasize the knees. Okay? Very nice, guys. So this is my all-time favorite pose. Anybody can do it. Get them in the swing, you put the leg loops on, and you just let them play. Okay? But from here, we're going to try and sync up. Next time we come through center, we're going to push the elbows to the right and straighten the, straighten the, sorry. Push the elbows to the left and straighten the right leg. So we're trying to sink backwards after doing the mandala. If the brain can do it, you can do it. Beautiful. So freeze frame. We're like stretching, stretching, stretching through the right side of the body. And then we're going to drop the hips, just sway to the opposite side, elbows to the right, straighten the left leg, twist. Really nice. So I love doing the freeze frame. I do this a lot. Let's do it one more time. Elbows go over to the left, straighten the right leg, press through those toes, and then just go ahead and sway to the opposite side. Elbows go to the right, straighten the left leg, hold it. That's why I call it freeze frame, right? You're trying to like stop something in, in mid-motion here. There you go. Very good. Come back through center. So we're going to go ahead and try a similar sequence so you can see with, when the leg loops are further away from the center point, it's harder. When they're, when they're closer to our hips, they're easier. So we're going to try a floating pigeon. Let's go ahead and bend the right knee. Put the foot behind the leg loop. Okay. And you can hook it, flex the foot back to protect the knee if you like. So floating pigeon on the right side here. You can use chillaxing arms if you like the back bend. Or go ahead and use your forearm press. But something that will create a hold so it doesn't ride up and irritate the underarms too much. So this is a very sensitive part of the body. Not only is it connected to the heart energy and the lung energy, it also is where the lymph collects. And so any sort of pressure on the lymph will be like a balloon with too much air in it. And at first, until those pressure valves release, that sensitivity will feel um, quite uncomfortable. So go ahead and take the chillaxin version whenever you feel like you want to break, and then come back into the forearm press if you want more of the hip stretch. So find the balance between those two emphasis in the pose. And then the bottom foot, I call it wagging the tail. So go ahead and wag your tail. So that left foot is going to explore in the space, easy breezy, like we're swimming through water. <laughs> you guys are very happy. The happy tails are wagging. All right, so the more that you just explore the twist here, you'll feel the stretch in the hip. It's like, oh yeah, I get a little bit more stretch there than I do there, and oh, that feels good. I'm gonna really dig in and dive into some of that tightness that hangs out in the hip. Do you guys feel what I mean? So it, it changes, the, thank you for being interactive. The other times I'm like, hello, hello, anybody? Hips, anybody? I, mean, I know. <laughs> so I like to just explore the poses. This is the play, right? The aerial yoga play is exploring, exploring and experiencing the body in new ways. Okay, good. So after you feel complete there, we're going to inhale to the arms. Exhale, wrap around. Now dive in and pull your forehead towards your arms and then get a bigger stretch. So if you want to make the stretch more intense, that's how we do it. And then we're going to go ahead and expand again. Now, go ahead and use chillaxin arms for this, just to continue to give yourself a break. What we're going to do, and this is all fresh off the press, I'm always making things up. I'm going to straighten that right leg towards the sky, and my foot is still hooking on the swing. And then when you drop the hips, drop the hips. This is the international sign for drop the hips, by the way. Yes, drop, you. <laughs> there you go. It works in the dark. Okay, good. Now we're stretching the whole outer IT band area into the hamstring. Flex your foot back if you want to go a little bit deeper. Identify your left hand. <laughs> Grab the outer edge of the foot and twist if you want to go even deeper. So you get to really make it up. Like how far do you want to go in the poses to make them more of a dynamic strengthening and stretching experience or how much you want to do the restorative. So the hips dropping is how you really get into that whole line. Do you guys feel it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, great. Release the foot. Go ahead and start to bend the knee. Let it sit on top of the, the left leg again. 
I'll figure it out sooner or later if it's not the right thing. We'll go into the swing and go ahead and lift your hips up towards the sky and lean back. So this might be as far as you go today. This is what I'm calling it's a new sequence called can opener. So this might be as far as you go into your back bend. But if you're feeling limber, go ahead and let the swing slide into the waist. Take your left hand, reach back for the left foot. Right arm swims overhead. So we're in a half bow. You can also reach back and grab the hip with both hands if you're feeling extra special. Let's see what is just right for you at this moment. Don't go too far. Just find the sweet spot. We still have another hour together, so you don't want to overextend too early in the practice. Go ahead and inhale, release the foot, reach up, grab for the swing, exhale, lower the hips, and hang out. How was that, guys? Do you like the can opener? Is that fun? Yeah. Can opener spontaneously okay. happen. Left. Okay, so we're like, oh, that's so fun. Go ahead and wag the tail a little bit. Use your forearm press. <laughs> Notice the difference in the hip now. Like, I don't know if you can feel it, but my whole outer line here feels way more spacious than the kind of contraction that happens when we first start to, start to stretch it. So in time, three to five minutes in the pose, repeating and just revisiting that tightness that starts to open up. That's, the, that's what I find the magic number to be. Okay, so we're gonna switch sides. So just use your momentum. Go and hook the left foot on top, the right knee, up into your forearm press. And then you immediately have your little tail wagging anyhow, so go ahead and just explore the space. Choose your favorite arm position and variation there between the chillax and in the forearm press. And just see if you can access some of the tightness. Where is the tight spot? Where can you open up a little bit more? What feels good for your body today? Just drop in to experience the uniqueness in your own expression. Nice deep breaths. Okay. And from there, we're just going to inhale, open the arms wide. Exhale, go ahead and round in, dive in. Get the sense of really getting into the glute and the hip when you curl and round your back here. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and inhale, blossom. Come into your favorite arm position, straighten that left leg towards the sky, keep the foot hooked, drop the hips a lot. See if you can drop in even more. Okay. Nice. I have my foot hooked on the inside instead of the outside this week. Yeah, see if that feels any better. Just whatever you, you feel is best for your knee. You mean like through the week? Or? No, I just have it on the inside of the swing, inside is closest to the base, okay. but I don't hook my toes around the outside. I just keep the foot oh, on the inside. There you go. Just see what feels better on the knee. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, from there, if you want to deepen the pose, you flex the toes back, open up the arms to a T, go ahead and reach right hand for the outer edge of the left foot and twist like you would if you're on the ground. Twist, twist, twist. That's so amazing. Good. Nice job, everyone. That's great. Now, you're a little twisted, honey. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and identify our right hand. Right hand. Okay. Right hand reaches for left foot. Yes. Yes. That's okay. And then re look towards your left hand. Mm -hmm. Drop the hips if you can. And twist and bring out the ribcage. Beautiful, guys. Right, go ahead and release. Come back. Center. Bend the left knee in. Go ahead and hold on to the swing. Push the hips up towards the sky and just lean back. Now keep holding on to the swing if that feels like a better option for today. It's safer. And for those that want to go deeper, they're going to reach the right hand back to the right foot. Left hand can just float overhead, overhead like a half ladle. I call this half bow when you hold on to the foot. Whatever we do, these big back bend inversions, you might get a huge rush of energy to your face. <laughs> but if you instantly come into a full body sweat, it's because the endocrine system is turning on. Go ahead and reach back and hold on to the foot with both hands. You come into the fullest expression. And then slowly release. Inhale, hold on to the swing. Pull yourself up to sit. Exhale, go ahead and relax. Keep the foot on top for the, for the can opener. 
Does everyone feel that? So that was the last one that we came up with. Right? She did that front top rope, and this was a chance to open it. Yeah, so I'm calling it can opener from the floating pigeon. Can opener would really be this pose. And you can pick it. Doesn't it kind of look like a can opener? It totally does. I'm always impressed with you guys. So this is called the can opener. <laughs> and I feel like I'm being can open. <laughs> yeah, so can, my can was definitely. Yeah, open. I know. Um, <laughs> And so, but you call this whole series, starting with the wag, the can yeah. opener series. Yeah, I'm just calling it the can opener series because, like, it has so many components now. Like, this just happened, which is a version of hook and stuff. And so, we're just building up to it. So, yeah. It's not on the outline yet. We'll see. The expansion of the universe continues to happen. Mm -hmm. And it just feels really good because sometimes this stretch is really difficult for people to relax into and really get the opening. So with all of the supports in place, I think it feels really good. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, it's always something new. Mm -hmm. Like what you're doing with the can opener. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So <laughs> you'll notice that the, the back might be talking to you a little bit, right? And so we're going to just slowly release that foot, come back into the chillaxin, sway it out from side to side, get your swagger on. It's going to feel good. We're going to come into another... Half vinyasa flow sequence, which I call the chill flow. <coughs> it's going to be similar to what we just learned, but we're going to end in a half bow. Full bow. <laughs> Come to center. Go ahead and inhale to the arms. So when we exhale, we lean back, but not only expand the arms, but expand the legs. So straight arms, straight legs for our star. Beautiful. Go ahead and exhale, squeeze the legs together, squeeze the hands together. So we straighten the legs out if you can. <laughs> Go ahead and lean back for a reverse namaste. Beautiful. Exhale. Go ahead and just come to sit and open up again. So we're just going to do half of it to warm up. So inhale here. Let's exhale and roll in, round in for a floating child. So add the floating child. Go ahead and drop the head. Relax into it, and then inhale and expand for star. Long arms, long legs, and then reverse namaste. Squeeze the legs together. Beautiful. Squeeze the hands in a prayer. Lean back. Beautiful. So we're going to reach up, grab for the swing. Go ahead and pour yourself into ladle. Okay? So in the ladle position, palms up look towards the sky. Legs stay squeezing together, arms overhead. From ladle, you can go ahead and bend the knees. Swim the hands back for the ankles. Now, if bow is not your normal practice, this might seem like a little much, so only reach back towards the legs, but don't grab. Grab for the ankles if it feels good on your back. Okay. One more inhalation here. Exhale, release the ankles, reach up. Grab the swing. Inhale, come to sit. Whew. Exhale, integrate. Isn't that amazing? So intense. It doesn't matter how many times I do this sequence. I always get the same major head rush and big opening. Like it's like flushing the endocrine system. So anybody with like fatigue, chronic fatigue, autoimmune, just low energy in general, just have them do a few waves of the chill flow and it'll just immediately turn everything on. Mind you, they'll probably go into a massive detoxification, <laughs> which is, you know, a free cleansing program as well, and they'll feel really nauseous and woozy, but then later, they'll thank you. <laughs> Down the road, they'll love it. Eventually, I promise, okay. So let's go ahead and do that whole sequence one more time. Inhale, tee the arms. Exhale, round in for floating childs. Relax there. Inhale, blossom for star. Expand the arms, expand the legs, lean back. Exhale, squeeze the legs together. Squeeze the hands into prayer. We might, we might touch toes, it's okay. Please, let's use with your neighbor. Reverse namaste. Go ahead and come into legal position. Slide in. Beautiful. Bend the knees. That's position number one. Position number two is reach back for the ankles for bow. 
and then position three is grab the ankles. So only grab the ankles if it feels really good, otherwise it can be too much. So full bow position, big inhale, expand through the heart, exhale, release the ankles, inhale, reach up, grab for the swing, come to sit. Very nice. So that was our chill flow sequence. Let's chillax for just a couple breaths here. Always give yourself time to integrate. It's a lot of information for your body to take in and organize. We're going to come into our hip opener. I call this sequence the silver spoon. It's like you're bending a metal spoon back and forth until it becomes soft, you know, and starts to bend more easily. Again, the sequences are supposed to be silly and funny and all that jazz. So we inhale, we open up the arms. You guys doing okay? We're going to have about another 15 minutes of flow, and then we're going to get into some play time and then a nice long shavasana. So inhale, go ahead and open the arms. Exhale, reach forward towards the knees and slide up. So we're holding on to our leg loops, not the swing, but the leg loops, okay? So again, with the floating pigeon, we're going to inhale here. Sorry, floating child. Exhale, round in for child. So you're just going to squeeze the knees together and bow in towards your legs, okay? This is when we do our bicep curl again. So inhale, open the hips, open the knees, go ahead and bicep curl up. Hips are going to stay level. They're not going to be up too high. They're going to stay level with the knees. That looks great, everybody. Exhale, go ahead and round back in and squeeze for child's. Inhale, open, bicep curl. Exhale, go ahead and squeeze. Very good. Inhale, open, bicep curl. See if you can straighten the arms, straighten the legs. Now we're gonna straighten the arms, but first we have to push our fingers away. Straight up and down. And then straighten the arms if you wanna come into home. Not the swing, but the leg loops. Get your arms around the swing. You're going to lose your anchor. Thank you. Yep. Straighten. So this is hummingbird because you can start to fly <laughs> easily. You can get your vibration, your flutter going. Very good, guys. And then if you want, you can actually lean forward for flying squirrel. Completely unnecessary. I just wanted to show you. So you lost your anchor there, Sam, and you're holding on to no big deal. But you want to make sure your arms are level so when you lean forward, you don't lose the swing. You're okay. Just keep it nice and slow. Hold yeah. on to this one the whole way through. Yeah, yeah. Was that right? Yeah, it's just the, the swing um, should stay higher up on the body. It's, it's not a big deal. If, we, if we can keep the swing on, oh it's just hooking, kind of like the forearm press. So I think your hands are a little high. Keep your hands closer to your shoulders, so you can come forward. Okay, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Not that big of a deal, but you know, for some people, I wouldn't want them to lose that because yeah. from there we would go right into our flying butterfly. But if it's slid all the way to the to the hands, we're not going to be able to do that. Okay, so we're going to come back. Let's just relax for a minute. Try to slow it down. Whew. Just see if you can go through, just for fun, I want you to see if you can remember your sequence. Go through the chill flow. I'm going to walk around and just give little adjustments here and there. So can you remember how to come into the chill flow? Not the hummingbird one we just did, but the one before. So see if you can come into your own variation of it. into the cellular memory. And whatever you remember, whatever you remember is totally fine. But just give yourself some time to play with it all. What's it feel like in the body? Just go at your own pace and in your own time, in your own way. Job. 
We don't really need me. I'm like, all right, I'll see you later. Yeah, thanks. Enjoy the rest of the afternoon. <laughs> and we'll be back next month. <laughs> really nice, guys. Okay, so we're going to inhale through the arms. Reach forward, so towards the knees, and slide up. Inhale, just lift the chest. Exhale, dive in for your floating childs. Inhale, back up, curl. Open up, and keep leaning forward. This time, we're going to bring our hands in front. So you release the leg loops, palms face me. Straight arms to begin. For, yeah, you got it. Skydiver. Bring the feet together. Knees stay bent. Feet together. Push the hips down towards the ground. Good. Now you'll feel intuitively you want to bend the elbows, right? Bend the elbows. We're going to slide into the elbow crease to come into flying butterfly. Good transitions, guys. Mm -hmm. Really nice transitions there. So from our hummingbird and flying squirrel, we can come into our skydiver and our flying butterfly. <laughs> Rock to the floor. Open up the front of the belly. Open up the front of the chest. Feel the long length of energy through the spine. No compression in the lower back, even though we're opening up the front, right? So it's like bow, but we keep the lumbar completely relaxed. Beautiful, guys. Okay, this is how we reverse. Pull your feet down towards the ground, sink your hips back. Engage your arms and let yourself catch in Shalatsu pose. I know, you feel like a little bug. Feet down towards the earth, that's the first part. <laughs> so what, do you know? what in the earth? I don't know what happened. <laughs> so this is the circus version of reality. This is what we do. You get stuck. <laughs> and then there's that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's try that sequence one more time. <clears throat> Inhale to the arms. Exhale, reach forward. Go ahead and hold on for the leg loops. Nice. Go ahead and squeeze. So inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, dive in. Round into the child. Inhale, go ahead and bicep curl. Come into hips. Hands in front. Skydiver. Feet come together. Knees stay bent. Push your belly and your hips down towards the ground. Mm -hmm. Nice, bend the elbows and slide in. Okay, there's always somebody who naturally just comes into high diver and then this reminds me to, to help you guys do that sequence, so no problem. So hang out in flying butterfly for as long as it's comfortable, maybe flutter, right? just bank a little from side to side to flutter. Pull your feet down towards the ground, sink your hips back. Yes. So, Selena, this is the ground. Pull your feet down towards the ground, sink your hips back. There you go. And then let yourself catch. There we go. You got it. Back in relaxing. Really good, guys. Okay, now you guys are nice and open, <laughs> which makes my life easier. But for anybody with really tight hips, they're not going to be able to do this comfortably, and you'll tell by their face. And they're not happy with it. So at that point, you can bring your feet down towards the ground, straighten the legs, and come into the high diver seat. So everybody come into your high divers. Okay? Now in the high divers, we get the leg loops into the sweet spot. There is a sweet spot. I call this the Manzi. It's like you're in your little hot pants. Okay? Walk your feet to the front of the mat. Let the swing be right behind the heart and lean back. So we can just like hang out here, right? Bring your hands to prayer. So I lean back so we can get in between that space. There's a space in between the leg loops and the swing. We lean back and we get our hands into prayer. Now we straighten our arms forward towards one another. As we bring them wide, we open the legs wide too and lean forward. So wide straddle legs, yeah, and then swim back. So this is another way to come into skydiver, but a little bit easier for those that um, have the same openness. Now my hands are strongly pushing towards me. Okay? And then you can bend the knees and bend the elbows and slide into flying butterfly here. So I want you to take five breaths just hanging out, banking from side to side in flying butterfly. Feel free to play and explore with the pose. 
Really give yourself time to open up in front of the chest. 